Liam is finally here in Master Duel. And I took over Sam's office just so I could show you guys. Let's get straight to this video, baby. Minadium, Master Duel, Master Class. Let's go. And let me tell you right now, this is the best deck in Master Duel. Going first, it puts up eight negates. Going second, it breaks any single board with 14 defensive cards going second and never bricks because it's 25 starters. Drift math, baby. Let's go. Before we get into this video, I released a Manadium Masterclass where I show you how to play Manadium properly. Live for five hours. Live for five hours. It's TCG, but it overlaps into Manadium Masterclass Master Duel. That's a tongue twister heavily. So check it out and get prepared for what's coming in TCG. Whether you're a TCG player or Master Duel or not, check out the recording. It's on sale now because it's already done. The live class was 40, but check it out now. It's in the description. Go check it out. All right. It's time to show you guys the combo tutorial of this deck as well as the deck profile. Let's go. So with that being said, I'm going to show you guys how to combo now. No, none other than, than a hand like this, which is all Manadium cards. This is where you guys can actually learn what they do. The idea behind this deck is simple. The first Manadium card you want is Roomheart. Once you get Roomheart, the next card you want is Meek. And then get the uh, that Of course, you already have Calarium. That's what you want to get to. And you want to resolve Calarium's special effect as much as possible. As you see here, when you're popping with Obsidian or Vices, Make sure to specifically pop the Meek. Now, if you guys don't know what these cards are, I do recommend familiarize yourselves with them first because this is elite level, baby. I'm the best player in the game, but I'll go slow down for the noobs. It's okay. I love noobs. I was once a noob too when I was two years old. So now I'm going to teach you guys how to destroy the other noobs. But always, you want to get Roomheart and Meek in rotation consistently, and you want to be popping the Meek as much as possible. You're able to pop Meek multiple times and still summon multiple Meek from deck as well as Calarium summon it back from grave. So keep resolving that and getting as much plus as possible. As you saw there, what that did was when Meek gets destroyed, it specials another Meek from the deck. And Calarium says when a tuner gets destroyed, you can special that tuner from the grave. So it's a cool little loop there. You get both out there. And Imagining lets you draw two and put one card back. So I put Rick Phobia back, knowing that I'm going to get it for free. And then we're going to do a cool little trick here with Axel Synchro. This is not doable in TCG, but right away at this point, there was no, like right when I summoned, you'd prefer Baron right away in tcg because you get nibbed and you get destroyed however once you summon th these guys you see no trigger that there's a card on the fifth uh summon no nib clearly unless they're super mega giga brain and decide to click off all uh notifications or whatever so i can't see that he has nib but no one's gonna do that in a scenario where i could put up baron at any moment so the second you see 822 and he's like, if you could make baron they don't go nib they don't have nib so you're able to do this and play with fire a bit to end on a slightly better end board where you can get the dispatter and getting a free summon so here we're gonna go light heart get a free right phobia and you always want to put your cards in defense where you can because right heart is be able to draw one card if it's summoned with three monsters in defense so we get ourselves a free uh circle right card here we go bestial dispatter so now dispatter is gonna we'll go arrival we're gonna get lots of cards here get vices you're gonna go straight into cross sheep and then right away, you're gonna go Baron. I meant to put Cross Sheep in another zone. That was my mistake. Trigger the Cross Sheep Synchro effect. But I should have, like, with the Synchro effect, you get free value. At this, uh, you get free attack boost, but you put everything in defense anyways. Because if it's an attack, you might literally die to some purely cards if they have too many board breakers. But if you see how many interruptions you're about to get, that's a lot. Now, if you check your grave, you set up Cross Sheep. Does anyone know why? You set up Cross Sheep because of Astroloud. So now what you do in the grave is you banish Vices and Scareclaw Rykart. The special Astroloud underneath Cross Sheep, triggering the effect of Cross Sheep to special Meek or Roomheart. Meek and Astroloud can then, at that point, make another Synchro 10 if you want Chang'ing. You could do anything you want in that scenario. And then Dispatter could special back the Vesis from the extra deck. So this end board is Dispatter, Baron, Chang'ing, Apoloza, Reframing, and Book of Eclipse. And all of Apoloza's effects are going to resolve because whenever they enter battle, you just Cheng Ying banish because you'll have reframing in graveyard at all time for free banish. And that's three, that's Apoloza, Cheng Ying, Baron, Dispatter, reframing, Eclipse, Apoloza for three, unbreakable end board. Of course, he's gonna scoop before because he knows he's gonna get slapped. That's the idea of it. That's the common tutorial. And now I'm gonna show you guys the deck list so you could utilize that common tutorial with. This is the deck list. It's gonna capitalize on as many board breakers as humanly possible because that is what works with this deck you don't want tuner hand traps to do jack shit and there's only room for about 10 11 defensive cards in this deck because you want to max out on every single way to combo as humanly possible you need to play fenrir in this deck you need to play right south in this deck vices there's just four ways to vices starfrost you want as many ways to vices as possible 
as many ways to right card as possible as many ways to room heart as possible but you don't want the balls the balls are shit you, if you draw me two meeks you recognize how bad of a hand it is and you want to always make sure you have some form of these go second cards with card look at how many look at the bottom nine call by needs to be there because of maxi so you look at these nine and then two talents is 10 11 right soft 12 Fenrir 13 14 that's 14 cards that are outright board breakers going second especially going second even hard drawing right phobia a lot of times you're putting summons monsters in defense so you actually have 16 go second cards that are outright defensive not combo related but at the same time, right, Phobia, despite being a pop, it says the three monsters on defense pop a card going second, your point has three monsters on defense. Or if they have one or two, you're going to put one there to pop. So even drawing, it's fantastic. Fenrir is a combo card. It searches Scareclaw Kashtira. You summon Fenrir or Right Soth to add Scareclaw Kashtira. And then eventually, when you get a Scareclaw engrave or Fenrir engrave, and you put that engrave quickly, so you summon your Scareclaw Kashtira, special summon it, to then continue going into your combo. The Kashtira cards are mandatory. Mandatory in this deck but sadly this is the only kashtira cards you could play i would not advise playing the other kashtira cards this is fine uh this is a good number three and one uh so i'm gonna go over the names now uh the deck works it's maxed out on everything engine wise except abscission abscission is not that good even one one abscission is understandable two abscission is fine you're not playing hand traps so you, you can't abscission pop a hand trap and board breakers are inherently better in this deck uh it just synergizes better the like talents going second just draws two so it doesn't need to be a board breaker so you never actually brick econ takes their card that you didn't combo with because of all, all the links you play to go cross sheep or something or uh straight into dark to continue playing and take more stuff drop like it, it econ droplets allows your place to resolve so when they imperm the room heart or a right card you chain econ or droplet and you want a right card and room heart in the graveyard so there are scenarios where if they stop your normal summon with a room heart if you're not playing the proper cards like fenrir droplet econ uh, you could get uh, screwed there. So make sure to uh, play cards like Droplet or Econ to make sure you, these effects resolve. So three right card, please. Don't play two or one. It's stupid. You need maxed out. Three Room Heart, three Vice of Star Frost, two Kashtir of Fenrir, one Scarecrow of Kashtir, one Rhoda, two Talents. If you notice, I'm playing two of each of the board breakers except Droplet. Droplet's by far the best board breaker. And because of this huge difference of, of, of decks in the game and how much uh, versatility... Uh, you want to make sure you always have versatility and, and utility against every single deck and to play two talents two econ two book of eclipse hey, econ is not that good versus purely but eclipse eclipse is really good against purely so you make sure to have some combination of twos of the, each of these to make sure you're safe so every matchup you're good and call by mainly for maxi if you want to know how to destroy purely uh what you do is you go scare clock ashtira which makes the uh completely without activating negates the effect of noir and you could easily access it via the entire deck. It's a scare claw. And then once the second they make it under four material, you start utilizing your abundance of cards to stop the noir. So it's very easy, actually. Uh, or if you don't have access to this, even though your, your whole deck gets to it, access code does the same. Baron, Chang Ying, you just get enough attack to force them to get four materials or less. Then you have a multitude of cards to stop it afterwards. It's very easy. Uh, two arrival. Make sure to play two arrival, two rec phobia. A lot of rookies only play one rec phobia. This is your best follow up. You need to play two light heart. You need to play two right. Well, you need to play two arrival. You need to max out on, on right card. These are all the best cards in the deck. And you want to make sure your follow ups fantastic. You want to make sure right card searches turn one and turn two. And same with right phobia. Uh, light heart is not once per turn. So if they imperm the light heart, simply vice to star frost it, special it from graveyard, and then just summon it itself again. As long as you're not using light heart with the same with the monster in the extra monster zone column, then you could freely use light heart as much as you want. Uh, it's not once per turn, which is crazy. Uh, one imaginings play this card it's broken uh two obsession two right phobia one pearl arena one right soft i the reason why you're playing one of each of these uh, it's at one for one and you play as much as you can as much as a waste of vices as possible three calarium then two econ one book of a two book of eclipse two call by three droplet one reframing then board as you saw would typically be some combination of baron dispatter cheng ying apoloza for three uh reframing that's five interruptions there and you play 14 defensive cards so 14 defensive cards you're probably gonna draw two as well as typically you do draw with two with image imaginings or or you also draw always at least one with a rival you're drawing one to three cards every turn so these 14 you always draw the 14 defensive cards you typically end on baron chenging the spatter apoloza for three reframing and two uh, board break like droplets econ is unbreakable and going second uh, your opponent is going to have a lot of tough time when you're playing 14 go 16 go second cards your opponent is going to have a very tough time when you're playing 16 go second cards three of them stop the board another three are just room heart calarium vices like combo cards there's no bricks aside from reframing so the deck's insane 
uh as far as extra deck we play two astro loud one axel synchro stardust you don't need a synchro six it really doesn't come up very rarely one crocker dragon eh, it comes up in scenarios with meek and fenrir also there's times where you could have a scare kashira sitting in your hand and as meek doing nothing this gives you a free synchro nine a free draw one i love the draws the draws i think are massive especially going second where it's like if you the difference of winning is one board breaker so you want as many cards to draw as possible the synchro six is redundant because when you go into the synchro six i know i just said i like to draw but a lot of the times it's me getting popped by room heart so they're both eight so why not just go into axel synchro to go into baron the only time you ever go to spat is going first going second if you have uh if you have access synchro resolving which is never gonna resolve you just go baron anyways but this battle is just there for going first uh yeah baron cheng ying cheng ying is really good with reframing because once you negate with reframing you banish in the graveyard after to get the second effect and chaos angel can come up at times uh with no amritara or the new synchro six uh you could play a lot of these more synchros but when they come out remove those synchros the, the links are the best part of the deck with astrolaud two light heart one cross sheep trigger the astrolaud to get what you want then dark unicorn uploads the access code the deck's absolutely insane if you guys want to see more check out my manadium training where it's a four and a half hour recording i go over everything to do with manadium and tcg and it overlaps a lot in master duel so check it out for yourselves guys i'll be playing more master duel especially with manadium this is the best deck in the game in this format hope you enjoyed the video smash the subscribe smash the like button see you guys in the next video peace